Hey, welcome or welcome back to Strategically Styled. My name is Lisa. I'm a woman over 50 and this channel is dedicated to helping you achieve your style goals. And to that end, today I'm going to be talking about how to capture the vibe of an outfit because if you can do that, it's going to save you some time and money and maybe a little frustration. Also, I've done a little thrifting, so I'm going to show you that as well, including these earrings. That was the thing. Um... But I will ask, like I do, if you are new here, if at any point, at any time, you find yourself liking this video, I really appreciate it if you click the thumbs up and like the video. Also, click the subscribe button and join our community. Click the notification bell so you will be notified when new content is uploaded, typically on Sundays, but sometimes around here, you just don't know and you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Feel free to comment down below and say hi. And so now let's get into it. Vibing from an outfit. So first I'd like to introduce you or present to you, if you already are familiar with her, Brenda, who has a platform called The Chic City Girl. I discovered her on Instagram and I just love her vibrant, beautiful outfits and how she styles. Her style is very individualist, maximalist, but she does it in a way that's very glamorous as well. Individualist, maximalist, glamorous. Yes, I think that sums it up. She is also now on YouTube, and I'm pretty sure she has a Facebook community as well. I will put links in the description below of where you can find Brenda so you too can look at all of the looks. So... Having said that, let's talk about vibing. So when you find an outfit that you're drawn to, the question to ask yourself or the question I ask myself is, if I could, if I was the same size as this person and had the relationship with this person where I could go to their house and say, hey, um, can I wear this outfit? And the answer would be a resounding yes. Would I wear it exactly that way? And you have to consider that sometimes you look at an outfit on someone else and they have a different body shape, um, they have a different lifestyle, they have just different things, they have a different budget, <laughs> and that outfit, as lovely as it is on them, maybe it would be, you need a diff you just need the vibe and not the outfit, if you know what I'm saying. So this first outfit and I really love it. And it is the zebra striped cropped jacket over this green blouse and these black pants with a wider leg. There's just the glimpse of an open toe shoe. And of course, her signature cuffs um, that she wears. And we can also talk about her glasses because the frames are also very bold. I guess if there's a theme here, it's be bold in fashion and these earrings. So... What I'm vibing with, is it the cut, the specific pieces, the jacket, the blouse, the pants? Um, is it the colors? Because when you're looking at outfits, those are pretty much the components of it. Is it the cut, that it's very structured or tailored or very loose and flowy? Is it the colors? If you kept that color palette and changed the cut, would you still be vibing with it? Is that still the thing and also the composition of the fabric is it very textured is it all like uniform is it flowy is it very tailored how does the fabric drape so in this case frankly I love every aspect of this outfit that bag in particular it's very nice I know that I know though with the bangles I probably could do maybe one bangle per wrist but I couldn't do them all simply because my squirrel brain could not handle having that much going on throughout the day. So love it for other people. but So that's something that wouldn't necessarily work for me. But in my interpretations of this, I have, I'm vibing with these colors. So I have this green blouse with a black and white tweed blazer and a black skirt and some heels and a black little top handle bag. So for me, this is how I have extracted the vibe of the outfit, even though it's not necessarily an imitation of her outfit. And if we were in the same place at the same time, 
I'm not entirely sure that if people saw us that they would even make a connection that my outfit was actually inspired by hers because they're very different, but that is the vibe. I also had this black and white sweater, and while I'm loving the pattern of it, I don't like the cut of it because it's much more bigger and oversized, and I feel like, I don't know, it's just too big and oversized. I don't know what else. I don't know what else to tell you. So I think I would just stick with my tweed blazer version of this for now. But it's really about extracting the vibe of the outfit and not really necessarily replicating the individual pieces of the outfit. So again, um, here is probably my favorite Brenda outfit, and I'll share that with you. And it is some plaid pants a navy pinstripe corset, perhaps, a pink button-up shirt with some white pearls, a tan wool coat, a navy bag, some um, embellished gold earrings, kind of a button style, and yes, and I just love this look. And I think the colors really aren't really what I would have thought to put like a pink blouse with a warm color tan coat, but Brenda might be onto something here. I think for me though, what I'm really drawn to is the composition of the fabric, all the textures that I've got the um, shininess of the bag and I've got the softness of the wool, but then I've got this bold plaid and so here, here's some things that I was playing around with, and I know it's May. I know it's May, but we're just playing around. We're not going to necessarily wear it today, but put this on file for <laughs> uh, the next cold day. So my first version is this pink thrifted shirt that you see me wearing now. And I have plaid pants, but the plaid is not nearly as pronounced as uh, Brenda's are. And I have a old black JCPenney skirt with an elastic waist. I think you see where this is going. So if I pull that all together, and in the, for the purposes of this, I just kind of folded the skirt up to kind of give that corset-ish vibe. And I put, added a gray tweed blazer and my shiny blue coach bag, which I thrifted from eBay some time ago. So that is that. And then in my second version, I do have a plaid skirt that has a very pronounced plaid uh, pattern. So it's same thing, but with a skirt instead of with the pants. And then what if I replaced the gray blazer with the tan coat? Because this is a tan coat that I thrifted for $1 from round the way. Um... And that is also another variation of this look. But just for fun, I also have this old sequin skirt. So for the purposes of this, it is just secured with a hair tie. But let's revisit the sequin skirt a little later. But for now, it is the skirt over the pink blouse with the pants and the things and... I kind of like that too. I think it's fun. So those are some of the ways that I have tried to capture the vibe of a look so that I can recreate it. And this doesn't have to necessarily have to be a look that you see on a content creator. It could be a mannequin in a store or on the website the next time you're on the website for Zara or wherever it is you shop. So one of my favorite things about Brenda is that she has a podcast called Talk is Chic. And on it, each Friday, she features creative people, usually in and around the fashion space. And it's about an hour, and they just talk about style and their fashion journey and some of the cool things that they are doing. Um, like she's had somebody who is a merchandiser for a men's clothing store and fashion designers and photographers and just um, stylists and just very interesting people. And I started listening to the podcast while I would be out walking with my headphones on. And then I realized that 
when I get home, I'm going to have to go back and listen to this again and get a piece of paper and actually take notes because it's so inspirational and it really is a wonderful thing. If you really like to geek out on fashion and style, you can find Talk is Chic on Instagram on Fridays, but she saves the video. So even if you can't catch it live, you can um, follow up with it at a later time. So yes, Brenda at the Chic City Girl. So moving on, I am going to now share with you some of the things I've been thrifting and also a little challenge that I am giving myself concerning thrifting. So let's get into the haul. This floral shirt dress was 25 cents. And I also got this blazer. It is Nicole Miller and it was new with tags from um, TJ Maxx for $32. I paid $1 and I am wearing that shirt dress as a blouse and I really like that look. Next up, I got this silk Halston blouse. It is a uh, white print with black H emblem on and here I'm showing it to you with the blouse tucked in and putting it with the bag. Also, I thrifted this orange cardigan from ThreadUp. This is the priciest thing. It was $24.65. Next, I have these royal blue pants, which I'm just pairing with an old JC Penney uh, striped shirt. And then these navy cotton twill pants. They are Ann Taylor. I got them from Goodwill. Goodwill. And these pants were $5. I got this brown and pink argyle uh, scarf. This fringe sweater I got for $8 from Goodwill. And I'm putting it with these Walmart uh, trouser jeans. But I really like, obviously, the fringe detail. I think it really adds to the style of the sweater. And, of course, no thrift haul around here would be complete without you guessed it, a beige sweater. This one also was new with tags and it has these nice uh, pearl buttons and I got that for 25 cents. So altogether, this thrift haul cost me $44.65. If you saw my no buy list video back in January, one of the things that I said was no more projects. And the reason that I had to put that limitation on myself is because I already have a box. I had to start with the bag and then I had to move the bag into a box of project clothes of things that, oh, all I have to do is da, 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 da. And some of the things are in actual disrepair and some of them are minor things like you just need to fix the hem or you need a button. But in any case, what I'm doing is that I am not going to, I'm going to be avoiding thrifting for at least the next 30 days, if at all possible. Um, and instead, what I'm going to be doing is working with the clothes that I already have in my project box, in the possibility bag, and I'm going to be doing things, basic things like the hem or the buttons, and then I do have some major upcycle kinds of things that I purchased them and I had a vision and the vision has yet to be realized. So I'm going to be working on that. So that is something I'm going to be doing over the next 30 days. Hold me to it. Hold me to it. <laughs> but I need to either do something with these things or just get rid of them. So it's now or never for the possibility bag. But anyway, guys, that is the video. That is what I thrifted. This is what I am up to for the next 30 days. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And I will also make a comment that I know, I think it was last week or the week before that I didn't post anything. The reason that this channel exists is it is kind of my creative alpha outlet. It is just something I do for fun and um, just to kind of take my mind from some of the stress and 
other things going on and getting into the technical aspects sometimes that are involved with making this video, hopefully not with making this video that I'm filming right now, sometimes it stresses me out and it's kind of a lot. And it gets to a point where then this kind of defeats the purpose of this being my fun hobby if it's turning into a chore. But I'm working through it, working through it, and yeah, so we will see what the end will be. As always, I hope that until we meet again, your day is blessed and stylish.